the secret Goldman Sachs tapes. Um, some Federal Reserve employee recorded, you know, banker conversations at Goldman Sachs for 47 hours. And, um, and you know, they, they, the overall conclusion, like, I haven't read, the, I, I haven't read, like, the full transcript of the, of This American Life, their story they did on it. And I haven't read to the, I haven't listened to the tape either. But, like, it seems like the overall gist of it is the Federal Reserve, like, has, you know, practically no input or or oversight whatsoever on the big banks like they have people who work there as you know people who are supposed to regulate the banks but they don't speak their mind they don't um bring up issues that they see in terms of volatility or risks that the bank is taking they just like they don't they don't do what you know most of the american public thinks that they're supposed to do they didn't have any control over the banks because the Fed made their employees be so secretive about everything that just nothing ever got done. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, uh, should we talk about that? Should we t do that in the podcast, or is it not really, not really crypto related? Mm -hmm. It's just kind of like, oh man, the Fed sucks, the big banks suck. Yeah, I wouldn't really know what to say about it. I mean, because, I don't know, I thought it was pretty well known that the Fed doesn't really have any control over what the banks do in their daily operations. Pretty much all they can do is just, you know, influence uh, lending and, you know, lower interest rates and things like that, but they can't actually make the banks do anything. Mm. Like, that's what I've always understood. Yeah, it's, but like, they don't even, they don't even like, like, forget about making the banks do stuff. Like, it's the job of the, um, the advisor, the Fed advisor that is, that is advising or overseeing that bank. It's their job to at least report to their superior in the Fed like of what the bank is doing like that's the whole reason they have like their own office their own desk with within the bank itself to know what's going on and report to the fed but like they don't even do that like they're discouraged from doing that um it's like it makes you wonder like is the is the fed even like actually dedicated to regulations or is it just like another is it just a puppet is it just an arm of the banks themselves? Um, cause oh, well, no, it definitely, it definitely is an arm of the banks. It was, you know, it was created by the banks in 1910. Uh, you know, there was a senator and then representatives from uh, J.P. Morgan, uh, Chase Bank, and Kuhn Loeb, which was a big bank back in the day. Uh, representatives from those three banks and... Um, Senator, his last name is Aldridge, I can't remember his first name, they took a weekend vacation to this island off the coast of Georgia uh, secretly and wrote the Federal Reserve Act that ended up being passed in 1913. So, yeah, I mean, the Federal Reserve was created by banks. So, you know, of course, it's going to be controlled by the banks. <laughs> oh, man, so uh, why, why, do, why do so many... Americans and people who are supposed to be like well versed in politics and and news and stuff, they put, they spout the same like nonsense of this illusion that the that the Fed can can regulate the banks. Why why like if the Fed was created by them, it's an arm of them. It's you know an instrument used by them for their own ends, for their own goals and profit and self interest. Why? in the world would it do anything to you know to to go against them to hinder them like it's it's all for show it's all for show yep yeah i mean uh the banks the big banks in america in the 19th century the late 19th century they started the movement for the central bank you know they um they went and started all these conventions and hired all these economists to do all this, you know, research, shoddy research, and, um, like, 
you know, get public support for a central bank. And then they like took out, took it to the government repeatedly. And they're like, we need a central bank. We need a central bank. We need a central bank. Um, and they did it. They did it to monopolize the banking industry in the United States because uh, Morgan Ch and Chase and the other big banks uh, were trying to become mon banking monopolies for a long time, but they couldn't because you know the free market just wouldn't let them. So they're like bank. So if the if the banks supported the creation of the Fed, uh, then why could we ever expect the Fed to do anything that the banks wouldn't like? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just it's silly. People people need to kind of wake up and realize that uh, that the the government is not. Yeah, you know, like, it's a fantasy to think that the government can make the banks better. Yeah, it's um. You should read this uh this paper. Murray Rothbard wrote it. It's called The Origins of the Federal Reserve. It's like um. It's like a hundred pages. Like you could read it in a weekend. Like if you didn't have anything to do, you just sit down and read it. Um, and it's a really interesting. Like it's a really crazy history of how the Fed got started. Mm. Yeah, I sh I should read that and get kind of educated about this crap. This is not the kind of stuff that they teach you in schools. Yeah, and, not uh, even in colleges. <laughs> like what? Yeah, the hell? Mur and Murray Rothbard is a really. A really good writer like he he's really easy to read it's not like he's an economist and uh you know that's kind of about economics but it's not all this like you know technical economic jargon he just you know he writes really clearly and concisely so mm. 